Hello, thank you everyone for joining us today live through our YouTube channel at 4 Geeks Academy. Welcome to Demo Day, final projects presentations by our graduates from our full stack development program at 4 Geeks Academy Europe. Yay! <laughs> Let's get it started with our country manager, Victor Manuel Gomez. Thank you, Victor. Go ahead. Hello, hello. Thank you very much for, to everybody for being here today. This is our second uh, uh, Geek Talks or Demo Day. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to introduce you for Geeks Academy. We are a coding bootcamp that are, that are based in Miami, in the United States. Since 2015, we have promoted careers and changed the life of, of more than 2,500 students through coding. We have persons in Latin America, in, in Latin America, in several countries like Chile, Venezuela, eh, Uruguay, Costa Rica, Colombia, and in whole continent in remote. But also we are based on Spain and we eh, offer our programs throughout Europe in a remote eh, version of our program. For Geeks Academy, base the <clears throat> is based on two main methodologies: learning by doing and flip classroom. And we also offer lifetime mentorship and unlimited and lifetime mentorship because we think and what well, we think now we know that practice and mentoring is the best way to become a good software developer. That all these guys that are here today, our student not only learn how to code, they uh, get some other skills that become in a developer, okay? We teach them HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Python, Flask, the most demanded technologies in the world. But they also develop, as I told you, I told you in the, uh, some seconds ago that, that they will develop another uh, um, skills because actually for Geeks Academy, it's not just an academy. It's a place to become in a full stack developers, okay? Um, just for last, okay, to, to mention something that is very, very important and that we are very proud of, of that in, in, in whole countries that we are for gigs has been recognized as a, one of the best coding boot camps in the world, according to Course Report, Tree Chop, Carry Karma, that are like the Bible of, of boot camps. Okay. And just in two hours of operation, we were recognized in Spain as the best, best coding boot camp. And just in one uh, year uh, of operation in Europe, if you go to Course Report, you can find that for Geeks Academy is one of the best, best options in Portugal, in Germany, in Italy, and other countries from, uh, from Europe. So I am super excited to see uh, what our students made. And here, uh, the, the, or see the first, uh, um, uh, the first, um, application web application that they have developed thank you very, very much to everybody to, for being here with us and anceli thank you very much for being the host of this uh, event thank you victor it's so awesome to belong to one of the best academies worldwide it's not an easy job and we are so proud of achieving um and that and let me explain you a little bit what are we seeing today this final project's presentation is what we call at 4Geeks Geek Talks, an event where our graduates share their final projects created in the past four weeks of their program. With our final projects, they put in practice all the knowledge they learned during the program. They will talk about their concept, how they work, on what, and what problem they are solving with it. At 4Geeks Academy, we believe in an education style which is based learning by do in learning by doing, this is why when you study at Fergix Academy, you get industry experience by creating fantastic projects to bring real life solutions. The exciting part is that this is their first time speaking as developers. It's amazing to know that four months ago, they, they weren't able to do uh, that 
Today, we'll have the pleasure to see the following presentations. Swap book, pick me up, teach and learn, and the core manager. We will also have the privilege of introducing to our awesome guest, Rolando Angelini. He's currently in the world of agile product development in SaaS, and he, he has extensive experience in tech leadership, software development, project management, strategic planning, and IT coaching in different industries. He is here today to inspire us, to share about his professional path and how you can thrive in the tech industry like the way he's doing. Let's get started, Rolando. A pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Anceli, for having me here. And the first thing that I want to do is congratulations to everybody because you are basically uh, finishing this program. You are entering an amazing world, the world of software development. You're not going to regret it. From now on, you're going to have great adventures, changing the reality, basically, of the people that need some solutions that you are, are going to be the only ones that are going to craft that piece of software that are going to make their life easy. So congratulations. So it's OK if I share my screen to start this uh, talking about the, the topic of today. Yes, let me. Okay. Uh, let me one second. Yes, okay. At the bottom, you have the button of yes. No, it's a, it's a permissions for this okay. that for at season new application. Uh, one second. Yes, now that it is. Okay. Oui. Rolando oh. will be back in a second. He's setting up his screen. What we will do? What uh, he will do? is to to share his experiences and a presentation with you guys um how do you feel today what can you see say about um this first presentation of speaking as a developer who wants to start don't be shy don't be shy you feel excited on, who's nervous uh, here come on alvaro alvaro Come on. <laughs> I've been nominated. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Victor, for the nomination. Uh, no, yeah, actually, yeah, shy and nervous and all, all that stuff. I mean, this is actually one of my first times speaking in public. So, yeah, I mean, not only as a developer, but in general. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually quite nervous, but also, you know, excited because we put a lot of effort and a lot of hours in doing our project. So it's always really nice to showcase what we've done. That's great. We have we are back with Rolando, so you can pick up some ideas from the way he's presenting his project. Are you ready, Rolando? Yes. Apologies for the glitch. This is going to happen, and you need to get comfortable with this kind of thing. <laughs> the important thing is to don't get nervous and resolve, and that's it. So now let's try again. It should work now. One second. Okie dokie. There we have it. Ground up. Yes. Okay. There you have it, right? Now you can see it. Yes, okay. we can see it. Go ahead. Perfect. So what the, the topic for today is, is hybrid work. Why do I think this is an interesting topic for you? Because much likely this is a new reality that you were going to face in your new workplace, OK? So which are the difference? Well, wait, what? Well, come on. You were telling me that I need to understand how to work remotely, and now you are creating a new full work, which is hybrid. What does that even mean? Well, yes, hybrid is basically a bit different than remote, but it's not exactly the same. Why? Because you have an office like it was before. 
it sounds silly, right? Well, we have always had an office. Why do that? Do this has to be different from a remote work on an office work? Well, there are subtleties that we're gonna see in the in the in the following slide. So the the formal definition is hybrid work is a flexible work model that supports a blend between an office, remote, and on the go uh, work. Okay, you will have autonomy to choose where to work, when wherever to work, and however you want to work where you feel more productive. Even if we try to fit everybody on the same profile, the reality is that we are not productive in the same hours of the day, during the same places. Some people are, feel more productive at home, others feel more productive at the office. So this is acknowledging that we are all different in the way we want to work. So what are, what are the, which is the good stuff about the, the hybrid work? The first one is the flexibility as a perk, because even though you think this sounds crazy, some people, when you say you are going to do remote work, they say, oh, this is awful. I need to be surrounded by people. And yes, that could be your reality. So instead of forcing you to be remote or forcing you in some way to be at the office, you have the possibility to decide. Decide based on some uh, rules, rules in a good way, meaning we are defining or you need to define how you want to work with the rest of your team. But even that decision is part of the flexibility. Diversity. This comes also from the remote work world. You will be able to basically have people from around the world working with you. This brings different backgrounds, different cultures. And this is important because the way you will approximate the solution to a problem depends on your background also. It's not just on your profession. It depends on how you have been solving problems in the real life as well. Most on the company scope, you will think hiding, hiding will be better for the company because you have more uh, places to look for great talent. But also it's good for you because when you are going to the, to the market, you will be also open to be hired in any market. You will be hired by your skills and know where you are located. There is usually some, some discussion regarding regulation, compensation when you are working abroad. But there are some companies that already solve this. So this is not something that can have to be solved by the company that is hiding you. There are professional services to be able to do this. Again, from the company point of view and also from your point of view, you can find some agencies or companies that can help you to find a job around the world. Budget. Again, you will say, mm, this is good for the company, of course. You, can, you don't have to pay for an office or you pay for an office that is not for the full capacity of all the people that you have. But no, this is also good in terms of your budget. As, as an engineer, as an employee, because you can decide, you can decide when to commute, you can decide um, how you want to have your meals, you can decide also where do you want to look for a job, because let's, let's be honest, there are difference, uh, uh, difference in the cost of living, there are differences on how much is a company uh, willing to pay in different places, so even this opens a broader scope for you in terms of how you want to plan your budget. The most uh, opinionated one is, well, you don't need to commute. Some people like commuting. You can use this space for reading, for reflecting. But let, you can plan also that at your home. You can plan some free slope at the office. So this is the reason why it's opinionated. But in general, commute is not that comfortable. And again, in this case, will be part of your decisions. You can evaluate this uh, when you have an, a hybrid work because you can decide to be in a, in a city that is close to your office and maybe you decide to go one just one day or maybe you don't go you don't go to the office because that's your decision and you go full remote but again the decision goes into usually into you and you still have the office there is a social place when you can go there and have discussions in person face to face which is also important and we're going to see some examples as why that is important so this is also part of the investment of the company. It's not something that you need to pay for. That is also an advantage. And it's a place in common for every employee. So it's easier to gather there from the very beginning of, of your relations of working together. And the end game is trust. When you are delegating this kind of decision to every person in the team, you are demonstrating your trust as a company. But also you as an employee are earning trust when you do this. Okay? because you are demonstrated that it doesn't matter where you are, you are capable of organizing your work and being productive and have a positive impact in the whole thing. And of course, in the company and the product you are building. 
What are the tough bits? Because this is not a fairy tale, of course. Isolation. You can feel that you are alone at home. You can feel that you are talking to your screen always. And this could give you a sense that you are not working as part of a bigger group. And this hits not just your productivity, but also how much you enjoy the things you do. So this is important to, to take into account. Communication issues. Now we are remote. There are different tools. You have to pick your tool carefully. You have to understand that people won't be available always. So you need to adapt to the new reality. You are not going to a, a, a desk and say, hey, can you help me? This is not the way to do it. There is more uh, rules to follow. This is inherited from the remote work. However, there are two more tough bits that appears into the scenario when you mix the hybrid part, being you have offices. And this is important, not an office. You, usually, hybrid organization has offices around different locations. Then some people can feel that they are second class citizens, depending on the location they are. Or if you are full remote, if you are full remote, maybe you feel that that makes you different, that makes you less than your teammates, that you have different perks, different uh, responsibilities, and also different benefits can make you feel less. So this is important to, to, to take care. And the decision-making process. Also, if you feel that the balance, the, the scale is not balanced, meaning that the decisions are taken just in one location, just by the, the group that is remote, this is going to take a toll on your productivity and also is a risk of, of you leaving the company. So how we should make this work? Well, there are thousands of things that we can do to make this work. However, I will, I will be bold and give some suggestions based on the things that I have seen that work. Fortunately, I have been working remotely and or in hybrid set setups from the last decade, not just from the pandemic, which also, to be honest, helped me to overcome the, the pandemic challenges. And these are the things that I have seen that works pretty well. Spoiler alert, you're gonna think, wow, this is silly. Yes, but they work. So for isolation, have a space at least once a week to gather. I strongly recommend that space to be remote, but if you can create a few options to meet your team, that would be great. For example, there is usually a, a day in the engineering organization in Factorial that we try to go to the office, the one that I are around. Some people don't go to the office, but they know we are taking a beer after that, and that's the place to meet, and that's good enough. You are going to have really important conversations, conversations that are going to help on strain your ties. Other people go to do some sports together. Other people uh, plan to, to do some online game together. This is important. That's the reason why the team building is also important. The suggestion is that you at least have a remote monthly team building because not everybody is going to travel, and that's, that's the whole point to be, to be remote and in a hybrid organization. But you can also plan some more, um, more, more often some in-person uh, gathering. I'm going to give you more, more hints on that. And one important technique is paid programming. There is no reason to drop paid programming because you are not located in the same office. There is a BS code. Most of you, I guess, are using BS code now as a DID. There is a BS code extension helping you with this, that you can connect it with GitHub or GitLab and can help you to create a whole uh, experience where you're going to feel that you're working side by side by your teammates. So, this is really important also from the work perspective. In terms of communication issues, try train your async common skills. You don't need to go to the emails, even though for some, for some kind of communication, maybe more related to paperwork, you can rely on the email. But also, don't expect everybody to reply the message in Slack immediately, because that's not the idea. Again, you can be in different time zones. People organize your time different than you. So you need to train your async skills, which also means train your patience. Don't do this uh, assuming things. Try to have a conversation in, within your team. This, does, this, don't need to, this doesn't need to be something on the whole company. Agree these kind of things with your team, which are the, the expectations regarding communication. Over-communicate. Repeat the same message as many times as you can in as many medias as you can. Again, sounds silly, but this is important. Not everybody has the same channel than you. You are remote. Not everybody has the same schedule. So it's important to over-communicate. And 
from the, this is not just for managers or tech leads, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your teammates, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your teammates in another, in another groups that you are working closely and other areas, not just in engineering. Talk with people, take time to talk with your teammates, with your groups, with your contributors, at least one per week or one every two weeks in a one-to-one -one setup. For feeling about feeling a second class citizens, everyone should be on the same setup. This means avoid meeting rooms. If you are at the office, don't use the meeting rooms. Use your screens, use your headphones, be on the same setup that everybody is to, to, to basically acknowledge that we have we have the same, we are the same, and we need to uh, benefit from the same setup. Even though you have the person on your side, that has happened to me. At the beginning, I hated it. I have to be honest because I have the person by my side. I can't touch that person, but I have to talk in this setup. But then I use my empathy to think about how the others were uh, perceiving the conversation and the productivity went up immediately when we started to do this the first time that I tried this. So again, this sounds silly, but it's absolutely important. You're always going to feel resistance even from yourself, but forget about meeting rooms if, every, if at least one of your contributor is remote. Decision making process, include everybody. It doesn't matter where you are, include the, the people on the, on the discussion. Don't make this a, 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 a something that is located in one, in one just place. So one of the ideas that I have seen is to split leadership across, lo uh, across location. Even if you are working on a feature and there are several people involved on that, split it between different locations. So you don't feel that the decision, even at that local level, is taken just in one place. Other approaches for more for level ops is, for example, product leadership and engineering leadership in different in different sites. Okay, this is this is super important, and be transparent. Once you make that decision, communicate, over communicate it. In terms of isolation, this is this is this is important. You still have an office with the people that you can reach there. Go to the office. If you have holidays in the city where you have a location, try to go there at least once and meet your teammates. This is, this is again, super important for, being, for building ties. How, can, how frequently can we do this? I would say once each three months is good enough. This will require budget also if this is something that the company will support you to do. But it can be done. And it's important. Again, it's opinionated because this requires budget and more planning, but it's worth it. I remember to make great technical decisions based on, based on being together, basically. And also, you start to value more the moments where you are together. You need to measure if things are going well. And I'm not going to enter hitting through KPIs, DORA, OKR. This is not what I'm going to say. Gather feedback. Ask your teammates how they are feeling. What do they think about it? Don't make it complex. Solve things of questions. You can ask about the tooling. You can ask about the collaboration and the frequency you are meeting. That's all. Um, and by the way, Factorial has a great module to do this, just in case you are using it and it's there. There is also a concept of employee net promoter score, which is important to measure. How, how much your teammates, how much yourself are willing to recommend the company for other people to join. This is also a, something that you can gather to understand if your hybrid work setup is working. And this is it. I just want to give a few ideas to wrap up the, the topic. Once, the first one is, it's a way of working. This is not just a top-down decision. If you are in a remote organization or a hybrid organization, you can use these techniques without any enablement. From, from other parts of the organization. You can do pair programming, you can try that. You can gather with the person, the people that you have close to it. If you know that, that people, that your teammates are in, the, in your same location, try to meet them. And remember always to have one-to-one -one conversation with, your, with your, your group. And yes, it's hard, but it's worthy. You can reach, again, diversity. You can be better at hiring. You can get better organizing your budget. You can build a strong teams because you're going to have different backgrounds that will, will help you to solve problems in different angles. So as Hannah Montana will say, you have the best of both worlds. So combine it. Take advantage of that. It's on you. Do you want to go deep in way of working? I recommend a stream programming book that never gets sold. 
it's not applying it by the book, but they are great techniques in how you're going to work in engineering and product organizations. Team topologies is a really uh, modern update about how uh, teams are organized, and it has a chapter that is here for remote work. So it combines the in-person work with the remote work. And well, I have a talk in Spanish, which is about hybrid work. This is more about my experience, telling a lot of crazy story, working with hybrid teams, okay? It's, it's in YouTube. And thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I hope it wasn't that boring. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Rolando, for your awesome presentation. We will have a space for a few questions um, for you. And Victor, you told me through chat that you have one question from the people watching. Go ahead. Yes. How many companies are handling the trust with this new way? I would say from the, the experience that I have, fortunately, maybe I have been in the right companies, but the focus is on the outcomes, on the results. If the thing is working fine, if the people are sticking together, there is no people leaving. If it's not hard to, to hire people, if people bring referrals to the company, and again, we are delivering, we are having great impact in our customers, it's working. What else do you need to see? Do you, you don't really need to track the time or the way the people organize. If the people is there and then built in the right product, you need to trust them because they are giving you the trust back. Thank you, Rolando. I have another question. They are asking where they can find companies that work under the standards that you just share in your presentation. Factorial is one, for example. <laughs> and, and again, um, you can do this question in the, 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 best, the best advice that you, I can give you is when you are interviewing, you are interviewing too. It's not the other way around. They are not just asking you questions and you don't have any rights to ask questions. So you can, uh, you know, you can prove about this. How do you handle remote work? How do you know how, why you trust your, your, your workforce? W do you focus on the results? How do you know things are working? What about the conversations? How is the communication going? Did you let go someone? How was the process? These kind of things are important to prove a little the culture of the company you are trying to join. I have another question. Um, this, this presentation uh, made people very curious about this subject. They are asking, if I, have, if I don't have any experience in programming, how do I introduce myself to a company that is already on board on working remotely? Well, I have, uh, we have hired uh, junior developers in the past and in my uh, actual company and others. I would say build your portfolio. Get experience is what you do. Put it on the on the wild. Have it in GitHub, have it in the GitLab. Look for different projects and side projects and keep going. Keep building your experience. And in the in the interview, besides your technical knowledge, be yourself. Tell what you are looking for. That is super important. Don't try to understand what they want to hear. Be yourself. So besides your technical part, tell them why you are there. Why did you do the bootcamp? What is your background? Where are you coming from? I have to say that I, I have a strong bias with people doing career shift. I have had a 100% good experience with people changing from another, from another uh, industries like pharmacy, psychology, economy. So uh, this is important for you to tell stories for your previous battles also, because this is going to work even in the workplace. It's not Technical is important. It's the pillar, it's the foundation of our career. But how you handle the work, how you collaborate is important as well, May in the same level. Thank you, Rolando. One last question. Where can I write you to ask you for a job? <laughs> I am on LinkedIn, Rolando Angelini Cesar. I am in Twitter too, Rolando Angelini. There is no, <laughs> there is no magic there. I don't have weird, weird nicknames, so yes. Please approach to me. I mean, yes, okay. of course. This is live on YouTube and thousands of people will be watch this. So you are taking the consequences, Rolando, <laughs> giving that information. So get ready. Thank you. 
Thank now for you. the um, one of the coolest takeaways um, from your presentation is when you said the way you will approach a problem is what will give you leverage in the tech industry. So taking it from there and talking about how to approach a problem today, our brand new developers will present the following projects. We will see Swap Book, which is an app for book interchange between users easily and without any expenses. Olga Golovina and Marino Signorini are the ones who will be presenting that project. I will be over the four projects and then the first um, group will present, okay? The second project that we will see is Pick Me Up. This app aims at reducing food waste by providing users um, the possibility to search for recipes that include the key ingredients they, may have, they might have in their fridge. Julian Galiosi, Patricia Rocha, and Alvaro Palma will be presenting that project. And last but not least, Teach and Learn Collaborative Website. It's a collab collaborative website where you can learn anything with different teachers and also be a teacher of the subjects you know best. In the end, we will see Core Manager. It's a tracker for the time spent on house, course, uh, house, cho house shorts for all families. Violeta Pinto and Christian Martin will be presenting. So let's start with Olga uh, Golovina and Marino Signorini and Swap Book. Good luck, guys. I have to say that it's not it's not Marino, it's Jose Suarez. Marino is in, in, in another group. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, but um Jose Suarez and, and Olga, please share your screen, okay, in order to put in the yeah, the hi there. <laughs> Let me share my screen and I introduce <laughs> Okay. So good afternoon uh, for our presentation today. First of all, let me introduce myself and my team members. I'm Olga Golovina and my mates Jose Suarez will take part in today's presentation as well. Unfortunately, our third mate Mujib couldn't attend today's meeting. Um, we also like to mention our teachers and say thank you to 4 Geeks Academy, to all of the mentors, and especially to our teachers, Juan and Felipe. Thanks to all of them, we achieved such great results during all of this challenging journey. And it's also true that we had lots of fun. So today's presentation is uh, going to be about our application, which is called Swapbook. Uh, which allows users to interchange books between them easily and for free. So we can afford to read more books uh, and without any expenses. Uh, so now Jose will explain why exactly should we exchange the books. Yes, uh, why exchanging books? Well, basically being a uh, book lover can be a little bit expensive. Uh, you might find books that cost that go from like 10 hundreds or even thousands of dollars on viewers. Uh, that's why we, we think that changing books, swapping books with other people will be able, uh, we will be able to read more books and at the same time we will be say we will be saving money. Uh, also because we feel responsible with the environment, uh, we will be able to give a, a second life to, to maybe to all those old books that we have in our shelves. And at the same time we will help with the less production of paper and saving some trees in the process. Yeah, though there are already existing book crossing services, we'd like to point out the main differences from them. Most of these uh, services have a bit uh, complicated registration system, or most of them also have um, additional services provided, which makes the user experience a bit more complex, or some of them have a monthly subscription and so on. So our application is supposed to provide user-friendly interface. It's easy and simple to use and find a book nearby your location. So you don't have to make any shipments and no additional services provided, which makes user experience more fluent. And now let's take a look at the project. So this is our landing play page, our logo. In the header part, we have registration 
and login. Uh, here we have the search bar. If you want to look for a specific book, you can use the search bar. Then we have the list of the recently added books. And then we have a map uh, where we can check any book which are available at the moment nearby our location. So let's uh, go ahead with this and we allow our browsers to use our location and now we can see the marks with the books which are on offer for interchange nearby our location if we are interested in one of those books so we just need to click find out more and we go to the feature of the book and here in the footer we have policy cookies and our contact details so let's come back here um, in order not to waste our time for registration process we already registered registered previously two users. So let's go and log in uh, one of this user. This user will be Jose. Okay. Now we are logged in with his user. We can go to his profile. Here we have all the information which he fulfilled during the registration process. We we may edit all of this information uh, or even change the password if it's necessary. And here we have the list of the books um, which Jose will add for further ex interchange. So um, let's test it and let's add one book here. So it would be a happy book. Okay, and now let's add the image. Okay, all the necessary information is fulfilled. Let's submit. Now the system informs us that uh, your book has been added. Now I'd like to go to the feature see all books here you may see the book uh, which we just added right now happy book and here in all books we have also the search bar if you would like to search for a specific book we can search here in the search bar and go for it or we may select any um, of those books which are on the list here Let's imagine that I like this book and I like to check the details of the book. So I go to the feature of the book. Here's the description of this book. And here are the, the, the user who is offering this book. I can go to the profile of this user, Olga, and check where uh, he or she is located, um, uh, the names user. Uh, the user's name and the list of uh, current books which this person offers at the moment. So um, um, if I like this book and I want to swap it, I have to click on swap. And here I have this form. I have to fulfill the contact details, uh, my contact details so it should be user jose and with a message telling that i'd like to swap this book i have another one which i think this person might like and so how can we interchange it so and let's send this message i think server is loading a little bit slowly let's wait a bit Yeah, there are some problems with the server. If not, no worry, I will demonstrate to you um, a template. It should be in, in a second, should appear this message that uh, where the system informs that the request of Jose to Olga just sent and um, we should receive I should receive as Olga, as the user Olga, I should receive this image to my email. 
saying uh, that this email uh, sent this message so i can reply to this user so yeah now now it's ha it has been sent just right now um okay and that's it that um should be the um, the interchange flow and now jose will continue and will tell you about the technologies which have been used uh yeah uh, yes <laughs> perfect uh as our host said uh, said in the beginning uh, we use we use technologies like like html5 css3 bootstrap javascript and react for the front end and we also use python and flask for the back end but we also use the api from google for google maps uh, in order to render or map in the in the application uh, but th that basically is not it. Uh, we are thinking in uh, future implementations that we would like to add, for example, like a chat box uh, to help us create a better interactions between users. Because at the moment, as you, as you could see, it's an interaction between emails, but we would like to create like a chat box in order for them to have a more real time uh, conversation uh, and interaction. And maybe through some notifications. Also, we would like to implement like a favorite feature in which the users can save, uh, maybe search from other books that they like, or maybe an author in particular, or even genres. Um, also, we would like to implement a rating and review uh, of users because that will help help some users to have a better, let's say, to make them think, feel confidence to swap books with another user, depending on the rating that they have. And lastly, we'll like to implement a history of swap books because we think that that will help some users in particular to know the likes of another user. Uh, so they more or less know which books to swap with them. Obviously, this is not it. We will keep improve, improving our application or project in order to present a, a best service for everyone. Thank you for your attention. This was uh, our project. Thank you. Thank you, Olga and Jose. That was awesome. And we have questions for you. Are you planning to use your app to allow new authors, authors to introduce their books through your app? Are you guys thinking in that way? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it should be for everyone at, at the end of the, the day. When are you guys planning to really launch this project and put it out in the public? Um, well, I will maybe after a little bit of more testing, maybe yeah. checking everything is perfect, uh, we'll, we'll consider just launching the app. Hopefully. Yeah, and also some future implementation, which we just mentioned. So maybe we should work on, on them a little bit first, and then we it will be available for the launch. One last question. What was the most challenging part of creating this app the backend but yeah backend <laughs> definitely I mean, backend. yeah I, I mean i at first uh it's like uh i don't know i feel we, we feel like a little bit scared of the backend because uh sometimes you can see it as a really complicated thing but one once the this like the pieces start to to be like together like every and everything starts to flow like naturally. It's really good. Uh, Rolando, really I would like you to to share with with them what do you think about their project and what tips you could give them to make them better. Well, I think the the product is super interesting, and if I can share a tip because I it caught my attention when you say, I want this to be perfect to hit the the public. I have some news there. It will never be perfect. But the good news is when you put it out, people are going to start to use it. And then is when it's going to start get, to get better. Because the user, you cannot predict what they're going to do. You're going to try it. Try hard to predict what they're going to do. But they are going to do fun, funny things. To, yeah. So <laughs> testing testing is a thing that you do. But it's also a thing that your users will do yeah. one way or another. <laughs> That's true. Congratulations, Olga. Congratulations. Jose, it's an awesome project. It's a needed project. And from a marketing point of view, I think it's a great niche for new authors and editorial houses to see Swapbook as an opportunity to launch in a different way 
books that are not in the market yet. So awesome. When you become millionaires, please call me. Please remember me. <laughs> I, I want to say I want to say one thing, and Sally, and, and is that uh, all these guys, when they are studying in For Geeks Academy, they learn how to use an API, no? But they don't have, I mean, we don't teach a, 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 a specific API, no? It's like you have to connect to, to if your project needs that you use Google Maps, for example, you have to work as a real developer, reading official documentation, facing with the app, and trying to do it, okay? With our help, of course, okay? But they work with that as a, in a professional environment, no? That is something that, that I, I always want to, to, to mention. And Jose, Olga, how, how was the experience, no? Working with, with, with this uh, in that way, no? As a professional. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean with the API in particular or in general? With, with the API specifically, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of a challenge uh, because obviously, uh, I mean, you read the documentation, but uh, at the same time, it's like something that we learn also is that there is not one way to do things, but several ways to do them. Like the, the thing that you're thinking, for example, at, at the beginning, we were just thinking, okay, let's, let's just render a map in the, in the application. But suddenly when you start to look like a, maybe a tutorial or something similar, you start to see that there are several ways to do it. So then you have to like, in a way, choose what, which which one is better, which one will work for you, how to implement it like better, like to render perfect, like nicely and everything. It was, it, as I said, it was a challenge, but it was a good challenge. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. Uh, do, do you want to say something, Olga? No, I just wanted to mention that I totally agree with Jose that at first it was, well, it was really challenging. And at first you see that, well, it's like you have the theory and you have to follow it. And later on, you understand that, uh, well, there are several ways to solve the problem, but you already know how to search for a solution at least and, well, and find your own way to, to solve the problem. Wow, that was great. You already know how to search for a solution, even though for geeks is not handing you how to solve the problem. That's amazing, Victor. Good job. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Olga and Jose. Congratulations on your new lives as developers. We are going to continue with the next project. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to continue with Pick Me Up. This, is, this app aims to reduce the food waste, food waste by providing users with the ingredients, what, what they can do with the ingredients that they still have left in the fridge. We will see Julian Gal Galusi, Patricia Rocha, and Alvaro Palma. Welcome and good luck. Hey, thank you very much. And thank you very much also for your introduction and for, you know, for being here and so on. Thank you very much. So we put together, uh, I hope you can see my, my screen properly. Yes, I hope so. Um, so yeah, we put together this little PowerPoint. Presley, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, as our host said, um, our app is called uh, Team Pick Me Up. And it basically, yeah, it aims at reducing food waste. And we do so by providing our users the possibility of looking for specific recipes, including the ingredients that they may have from home. Um, okay, so now let's introduce the team. Patricia, do you want to start? Yes, hello. My name is Patricia. I'm from Portugal. I am a social worker and I choose for gigs to improve my career. We, we, we cannot hear you, Julian. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sorry about that. My name is Julien. I'm from Canada. I live in Spain. I'm an accountant and I've chosen for geek also to, to change career path and get into the coding world. Awesome. And this is Avaro. Uh, I am, or at least I was a translator. And yeah, and I also chose for geeks because of everything that Victor explained because of their uh, awards, their syllabus, and so on. It, uh, I thought it would be really beneficial 
for me and my new career. Um, so uh, we are going to jump directly into tech. So besides the technologies that uh, Victor and the other team already shared, um, we've used yeah these, and I think Julian can can start with with the main. As a yeah, as a third-party API, we chose Edamam that uh, to gather the data and render on our website the recipes for the users. Exactly, and yeah, and then regarding the the backend, besides besides Python, Flask, and so on, uh, we also used uh, Word Excel. Uh, we've used it for the password encryption and and the and the hash checking. And Patricia, and we use HMEA, H HTML, CSS, Bootstrap. Also, we searched searched for the best trends on the food recipe website. Searching a lot of websites about food for inspiration. We also used some websites to choose the best color for the website. And the main tool that we used was Figma to create the mockups. Thank you very. Oh. Yes, you can hear me. So thank you very much. And yeah, and without further ado, what do you think if we take a look at the project? All right. So first thing that the user, which is, I mean, who is not logged in, will see it is this nice landing page where we explain more or less what the app is about. And also with this animation showcasing how our search functionality works. And we also have this call to action button that will redirect us directly to the search. So now a GIF should be appearing there, but it wasn't because, yeah, because this is live. Uh, so <laughs> troubles always come. Um, OK, so yeah, uh, the search functionality, it's actually open. Let's say you don't really need an account. And yeah, and you can use it. So let's input, for instance, chicken and lettuce. Lettuce. Oh, now here it is. Awesome. So um, as a user, yeah, so you can input for the ingredients. Here, in this case, we have this. Uh, you can check the nutrients. You can check also the ingredients, as we are going to, to see in a bit. This is a little bit limited right now. Uh, they can also check the recipe where these uh, this is, I mean, the website where the recipe is actually coming from. And if they try to add these two favorites, they will be prompted with this custom model. Uh, basically prompting them to, to log in. We've already prepared this user, not to waste time with the create that process. And OK, so um, let's see. So as you can see, the, the search was actually persistent. And, yep, and this user already has several uh, of these recipes in the, in the favorites. Uh, they can still check the nutrients. And now they can also check the ingredients. And if they uh, really, really need to. I mean, if they really want to uh, to try this recipe. Uh, they can just well, why, with one click, they can add it to the shopping list. As we can see, uh, this shopping list is already yeah, it's already full with several ingredients. They are divided by categories. So yeah, so even though the main focus was to to take advantage of the things you already have at home, if you really fancy a recipe. Uh, you can just take this list to the supermarket with you and you're not going to you know to go around the supermarket just buying whatever i mean whatever uh you may feel like at the moment um so yeah so user can just click on them and they can clear it um yep and also we should come back to yep to the same search so they can also for instance uh yeah they can select a category for it, send it to favorites. And if we go to favorites, um, here we can see all the recipes that this user has added, right? So, yep, we can also filter by, by category. Uh, they just want lunch, lunch and dinner, or maybe all of them. And of course, with this nice red cross, they can take it out from the favorites. And all right, so let's see. Um, OK, so these are the user settings, right? Uh, so during the registration process, we just ask the user for a, a password and for an email. And then if they if they want a more customized experience, they can just provide with, with their name, and they will be welcomed. Hi, Alvaro. And a username, which in this case is, option, is also functional um, for logging in with the with the username so the user doesn't have to write the whole email 
And yep, and they can also delete the account. No, in this case, we are not going to delete the account. So awesome, thank you for your trust. And yep, and I think that that's all. I'm going to log out. And as soon as we log out, we are redirected to the landing page. And yep, um, that was all as future improvements we've thought of. Uh, first of all, building our own API, because yeah, this one works actually pretty good, but it is still a free plan and it does have its limitations, right? So yeah, being full stack developers also provide us with the opportunity of building our own API and that's something we should really consider. And um, yep, and maybe um, uh, making good use of the already existing username functionality so users can review, leave comments, and they can also uh, share via direct message. Uh, recipes they like with, with friends and, and family. And that would be a wrap. Thank you very much for listening. And please shoot us if you have any question. That was great, guys. Awesome presentation. And I have to, to comment on about the look and feel of the projects we have seen so far. They look good. They look good for marketing. They look good for the audience. Congratulations. It's awesome. And it's something that solves a problem. I have questions for you. The first one that people are talking about is who will be fulfilling the recipes at Pick Me Up? What did you mean? Uh, uh, what did you mean? Sorry, I, I, I didn't get the, the question. The person is mentioning that you will combine different ingredients to get a result. Mm -hmm. Who will be doing that job of you guys, realistically speaking? Um, well, I mean, this is already done by, by the API. If we, I don't know if, I mean, yeah, this is done by, by the third party API um, in this case. And if we were to develop our own API, I think that should be something uh, we can talk about. I don't know if, if this answers the question. Yes, it's more a technical question because people are curious about how you guys created um, the picking up. OK. I, OK, awesome, yeah. Yes. What was the most challenging part about picking up? Did you want to jump in, guys? Any of you? I think a bit like the last team was the back end to have all the endpoints ready and to have everything working smoothly and Yeah, basically, I mean, I can pretty much agree because I was actually the main fucking engineer. <laughs> I really wanted to challenge myself, and yeah, uh, we 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 did it, of course, with the with the help of, of, of our teachers, with the help of, of Julian and Patricia. I mean, it's been it's been difficult, but yeah, as long as you do it in a team, it never feels that bad. Rolando, do you have any comments or recommendations for the picnic team? In, in fact, one curiosity, the search capability, which is basically one of them of your core uh, features, is going to be used in practically every product that you do. Do you have the technical details of how you did the search, for example, how you are matching the search terms with the your database? Are you differentiating uh, the, the infrastructure that you use or even the process for reading or writing? Or is something handled by the API, but Edamame? How, how is this? If you can give some, some details about the implementation. It, it was through the API. The API Edamame gave the keyword search functionality. And this is how we were able to, uh, that's how the user is able to look for recipe based on ingredients they have at home or specific ingredients they want to search by. Perfect. Well, my advice would be, you can dig deep in this kind of implementation because again, you're gonna be using it basically in whatever product you build. So great job. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a marketing recommendation, again, you are able to invite chefs and play a kind of a game so they can create those recipes and you can have the endorsement of those chefs. They don't have to be famous, just people who are producing content online and integrate that to pick me up. It will give you social proof about proof of how efficient and how useful pick me up is. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much. You did an awesome job. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Let's go with the next project. 
we are going to see Teach and Learn Collaborative website, which is a collaborative website where you can learn anything with different teachers and also be a teacher yourself. We will see Marino, eh, Bruno, and Bruno, and we are sending our greetings to Daval, who couldn't make it today to present with his fellow team members. Bye bye. Hello. Hi. Can we start? Okay. Hello and welcome. Uh, this is our project. We, we are the Teach and Learn app, uh, which seeks to improve the way that teachers share that knowledge and that students uh, learn. This is the development team. I'm Bruno. I have a strong background in sports education and, and coaching. So right now I'm coaching a pilot club. Uh, the, the Val didn't make it today, but it is here. He is working in the textile industry, but it was an entrepreneur who did uh, tech repair services uh, before coming to Portugal. And Marino is a former human resources and finance, finance executive who is coming back at tech after 20 years. Uh, we all chose the 4 Geek Academy Bootcamp to change our lives and to uh, get better opportunities and because we love a challenge. Uh, how was our app imagined? Well, we've, the premise is if anyone can learn, anyone can teach. And teaching is a great way for you to resume your information and share it with the world. And in doing so, you might help somebody. So the goal is to improve learning through shared condensed knowledge. Why should you use it? If you are a student, because you can learn anywhere. You get resume information, so you you better use your time. You, pick, you can pick up some from several approaches, so you pick the one that fits you better. You can search for that teacher that explains the things in a way that you can understand them better. And later, as you get more confident, you will create your own content and you will share it and someone will learn from you. Uh, for the teacher, we have the lesson templates that we'll show in a while, where you can put your resumed information and that might help you in your class to manage the engagement of the students. So uh, giving lessons to students will prepare them for class, that will save you time. And you can also use it as a homework strategy. They can uh, take uh, some uh, answers to a question to, that you will see to, to, to the class and you can also use it as a tool in, in the lesson so you can uh, help them to condense information and share with the, their colleagues. How we imagine the full app? So right now we've got an intuitive app with simple navigation, really easy to understand, which has a lesson template that the, the teacher can use. We are thinking about integrating images and videos and the assessment, although created, is not sending the information back to the teacher. Uh, we want also to or for the teacher to be able to organize the content and control who can have access to it. Uh, we want to create the community with a lot of communication and later peer review so that the contents on the website are correct. Uh, this is the technology that we use. Everybody that did the four Geeks Academy Bootcamp knows them. And now let's see it in action. Passing to Marino. Hi, everyone. I think, yeah, you can see. So, my name is Marino, and we'll be seeing the Tech Teach and Learn app uh, at live, and I will show this to you. First, I, I want to start to showing that this, this website is fully responsive, so you can use this website in the in a web page, and you can use in the your cell phone and other device. So this is the landing page from the for the website, and here we have the idea of the project, and Bruno also already explained, and why you should use it, and the tools that this website provides. So uh, in this page, we, do, we only have access to the sign up and the login page. And when we get in sign up, we have the sign up for the user, some students, 
and you have a, a sign up as a teacher. As a teacher, we have more information to fill, some fun, fun information about the teacher, the subject that the teacher uh, could teach, a few words about why the teacher, uh, why you teach, and the years of experience that you have. Um, we have here um, the login page, have of course the forgot password, but we already uh, set uh, sign up two users, a, a, a student and a teacher, and we can see the website, how this view uh, are showing for the student. So the student have access to the lounge, search and the profile in the lounge. The lounge is the main part for the student. So the student here can see all the teachers and all the lessons available in the website. As Bruno already said, this is the, a collaborative app and the, uh, the main part of this app is to be a uh, fast learn. So the lesson will be small content, 20 minute lessons, lessons for the uh, a fast learn and I ease learn. Um, the user, the student could also search for the teacher and for the teacher, see some information about the teacher and the lesson. And here he can access the lesson from here off or from the lounge. So in the lesson, the student will have the subject, the title, the name of the teacher, some introduction, a main content, a summary, some keywords for looking for this uh, lesson and some assessment then can uh, respond and also talk with the teacher uh, in the end of the lesson. Uh, this is the, uh, for the teacher, we have another uh, view. Let me go to the teacher. For the teacher, this, the main part for the teacher is the workspace. So here's, uh, here's where the teacher will build a small lesson and engage the students for learn. So we have the subject, the title, an introduction, a main part for the lesson, summary, keywords, access, assessment, and the teacher could send this uh, lesson for the students um, and also uh, submit the lesson. The lesson will appear in his profile, will appear in the lounge, and the student could see and, and go through to the lesson. Uh, here in the profile, the, the teacher could also edit the lesson. So if he need to add some parts or change some uh, content, he can do here in, in this lesson uh, and update, and the, the student could see uh, the lesson already updated. Um, we have here in the profile, we have two information that we, 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 we think that for security reason, it's, it is interesting for uh, right to us to change the photo or email for a teacher or a student. So we have contact us, then the, the, the teacher or the student can send for us and, and call uh, regarding of change the photo or change the uh, uh, the email that it is uh, a username for login in the website so i we with that we, i we conclude this presentation and we can open for the questions thank you very much Awesome. Great job, Bruno and Marino. One of the takeaways from your project that I really like very much is when you guys mentioned is that if you can learn, you can teach. And that cycle of continuing education provided by the same community, it's very necessary and important. One question before passing to Rolando, what was the biggest challenge of creating this project? Bruno, can you talk? Well, everybody mentioned backhand. We, of course, we struggle a little bit with the backhand, but uh, the the we had uh, trouble with the sign in and the login for a long time, but in the end, it was perfect. It just stayed, stayed perfect. And what's and also a feature that we didn't show, the forget password sends an email 
which is working to perfection for for that the vault did an amazing job so i want to mention him here uh, it was a great work by his part he couldn't make it but he's still here yeah for for for, for me for the the cold part back end is always a, a challenge but i like very much uh, uh, the back end so for for me it's very cool to, to work with that but i have I, I guess we have uh another challenge uh in this app that it is to uh select what is the the, the views and the lessons and the uh the functionalities that we can put in this first version of the website because they decide what it should be inside this first version what we should be in the second version what they said it would be uh it, it was a challenge also Awesome. Rolando, what are your thoughts about this project? Well, a takeaway for me is that the backend development keeps being the dark, the dark side of the force. It's always hard. But once, what I can tell you is once you, you apply, you build, you build around a concept, for example, authentication, authorization that you mentioned. This is something that maybe the technology will change, but your learnings there will be applied in other places. Um, another highlight, this is more a highlight, you use your background in education to build a product that is close to that. I think that is always a good idea when you are going into an entrepreneurship uh, journey. So, well done. Thank yes. You. Uh, do you want to say anything, uh, Victor? Yes. I just want to say congratulations, guys, because those guys are not designers. And I remember the first time when we saw the, the, the presentation an internal one was like the design was like mm, have many uh, uh, place to improvement no but now they have a beautiful app simple minimalism it's amazing guys i i told you yesterday and i wanted to say uh, today in public congratulations because you really uh, got our, our advices and you you made it guys <laughs> they overcame all the challenges they overcame all the challenges uh, without having yeah. experience in design and and again victor yes all these projects have something in common they they look beautiful and that minimalistic style that your app has it's already necessary in the process in, in learning you cannot have a lot of stuff in the in the middle in order to learn so you did great great in that aspect so congratulations can we go to the next project, Victor? Yes. yes. That's good. Thank you, Marino. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you. OK, so let's go ahead with our final project. The name is Core Manager. It's a tracker for the time spent on house uh, shorts for all families. Uh, Violeta Pinto and Christian Martin will be presenting. And I think all the moms worldwide will want to know how to go ahead hey everybody uh well done to the other teams you all did great as well i just want to give a shout out there before we started um so before we get going just a quick intro to us as the team uh so we're a two-man team we're a two-person team uh, violetta in terms of her background uh she is currently a qa tester uh, and she should be shortly moving into a, a front-end engineering role so congrats there and then myself, uh, I spent the last six plus years leading uh, customer facing teams, whether it's custom support, um, customer success or account management as well. So uh, in website uh, SaaS companies. OK, so what uh, what we wanted to do here was basically create the best chore tracking app uh, available. Right. Um, we really wanted to make it simple, easy to use, basically get you to focus on, you know, just getting your stuff done, being able to then dedicate that time to anything else you want in, in the world, right? So uh, that is basically the mission that we had. And uh, we have a little kind of like a bonus feature, slight kind of gamic gamification, or uh, let's say keeping other people accountable if needed, where you can also uh, join a team, etc. So let's jump into the app. Okay, so again, really simple or clean interface, uh, a little bit of kind of animation here to keep things, uh, well, to spice it up, keep things interesting as well. The main homepage is really focused on educating uh, the user. So 
we really tried to make sure that the user experience was as simple as possible so that there's no confusion. People can get started uh, right away. So we have kind of the steps that, you know, each person would need to take in order to, you know, sign up, log their chores, et cetera. And then as well, we have uh, the four teams uh, to add a little bit of that kind of fun aspect to it. Uh, we're already logged in, but we did spend quite a lot of time figuring out and just creating kind of an industry standard login, sign up, password reset, welcome email kind of flow to make sure that obviously, you know, that individual feels that they're being welcomed onto the platform and that they feel like this is something that is obviously industry standard up to par with everything else and something that they're going to be using uh, ongoing on an ongoing basis. All right, so moving over to our dashboard, I'm gonna pass it over to uh, Violetta so she can talk a little bit more in detail. Thank you, Christian, great introduction. Um, so on the dashboard, uh, you can right away see your stats. So how many shores you've done, how, how long you spent like, in total of all the shores that you've done. And then you can see uh, separated by shore type. So you have, dishes, laundry, cleaning, and shopping for now. You can see the totals and also a graphic just to create a relation between the short types and your efforts uh, in terms of how many times you've done it and how long you spent doing them. Uh, if you scroll down, you can add yourself to a team. In this case, this user is already in the team, The Incredibles. So you can see the totals of the team. So how many shows the full team have done and how, how long the full team, so all members of the team have spent on each shore type. But then on the graphics, you can see who did what. So how long someone spent and the other person in the same shore type and how many times the person did it. So uh, in this case, for example, Jane Doe did more dishes. She did four times and John Doe just two times. And then uh, on the minutes spent, uh, Jane Doe spent 100 minutes and John Doe just about 22. Uh, just in case you want to then uh, make it more equal next week. <laughs> Uh, to be able to add the entries, so to make uh, the data, we have this view that's the other shore, you have the form, you can select the shore type, uh, the date and the minute spent doing it. You just click add the shore and you will pile up a list of all the shows that you've done. You can clear the list if you want to make the, the stats go to zero, just in case you want to like clear start over uh, you can also we have this YouTube API integration you can listen to a song while you're doing the show or even watch a tutorial in case you want to know better how to do things uh, or you just really don't know how to do it <laughs> um, also uh, on the footer we have like um, general information and this is it. If you take yourself out of the team, you will g see just uh, your own stats. And that's it. Very simple. Actually, we have another another thing, which is the quotes. So on the, on the dashboard, on the the top bar, you have uh, an inspiration inspirational quote. Uh, in case you're feeling um, outside of inspiration that day. <laughs> Cool. Thank you for your letter. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely need a little bit of inspiration to do chores every now and then. So <laughs> that one's a, a personal one. I think I, I feel like it's needed. In terms of the techno uh, technologies used, so we have obviously the standard ones, I guess, across the whole of the, the full stack. Uh, we also use the, the different APIs there, um, the YouTube one to pull in the very first uh, results in whichever search that you have. And a quote generator, which will randomly um, well, will randomly pull a quote from uh, a bank of I think around one thousand five hundred. Um, and then in terms of the back end, uh, when it comes to just the reset password, we used a mail trap, which is a testing app uh, similar to kind of like uh, I guess using uh, Gmail or whatever, but just a controlled environment. So I'm basically not uh, spamming either myself or Violetta when when testing that through. Uh, and then in terms of future improvements, so I think there's obviously a lot of potential here in terms of what the app can do. And um, myself and Violetta obviously identify that we, we want to make it a little bit better in a different um, in different ways, a few different aspects. 
so the first one would be a custom chore type. Um, another one would be like a time counter. So you can just click, it starts, stop. And then that automatically adds the, the duration of that chore. Uh, some recommendations as well, obviously pulling the first um, result in isn't always the best result that you want. Uh, so having those recommendations would allow the user to choose whichever video or song or whatever they want to listen to or watch at that moment. Metrics by time range, you know, weeks, months, split it, make it a little bit more uh, robust. And then as well, create your own team. At the moment, those four teams uh, are great. But what if you wanted to have your very specific team with, you know, your household or anything um, there? Um, and then, yeah, just a, a quick thanks, I guess, to everyone at, at Four Geeks, uh, to, to Bruno and, and House especially, who, who walked us through and uh, was super patient the whole way. So, uh, yeah, a shout out to, to both of them as well. So, thanks. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Um, why you guys thought this app was necessary? What was the, the train of thought for this? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and explain that um, I have a full house here. And of course, managing efforts in shores, it's always a discussion. It's a daily uh, issue. But we also thought that it was great for, imagine, um, it, it happens a lot nowadays that people just share flats because it's too expensive to live in the center. You're studying or you have a new job. Um, and, uh, of course, the managing of the house efforts, it's always um, difficult uh, to take also someone accountable for the time that they spend uh, or even for your own uh, management uh, to see how long am I spending doing the dishes every week? Do I need to do this? Uh, is it something that it's uh, worth like buying a wash dishwasher, uh, dishwasher just to... Simplify. <laughs> I don't then, know, uh, Christian, if you want to add something. Yeah, I think the you you touched on it there in terms of you know you're you're in a flat or whatever. I think the kind of the the gamification aspects and like kind of the tracking metrics, anything that you can essentially use to learn habits better or just uh, get yourself to do things that you don't necessarily want to do all the time, like. I'm not a fan of dishes. I bought a wish, uh, like a dishwasher as soon as I could. So, you know, maybe having used this tracker earlier, I would have I would have bought it even earlier to be like, hey, you know, we're spending this amount of time. So, um, yeah, that gamification aspect was something that I was really interested in. What was the most challenging part? Um, I think for from my side uh, was the reset password. Uh, there's quite a lot of intricacies in what you expect to be like a pretty simple procedure or, um, or flow, just obviously making sure that, you know, you're verifying and not giving the ability to any random person to change login credentials. So um, that was a challenge, but we managed it and it was, uh, yeah, we gave ourselves a pat on the back when we did. Yeah, I need to totally agree with Christian that I think that uh, it's quite complex, the back end, of course, but I think that the the reset password, it's its something very special here. What are your thoughts, Rolando, about this project? Well, once once again, there is, there is a feature, a capability that you have there, which are metrics. Metrics are ubiquitous in software engineering, from integrating it into your product, which is what you did, to learn how to read it from your systems, because everything is going to be built around metrics in terms of observability. That's one thing. And the other is a curiosity. Have you thought about building the mobile version of your application? And what we'll, would be we'll the... We'll add it to the list. I guess it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Probably. Have you thought about the tech challenges about building the mobile application, for example? What bits of your current implementation can be used for the mobile and what things needs to be rewritten, for example? Yeah, I think that uh, it's mainly uh, an app that will be used on a mobile. Like you want to uh, take it with you, not going to go back after a long day and go to your computer and write down what I, what you have been doing during the week or the day. 
Um, so it definitely needs to be something that is responsive to, to the mobile and some things do need to be rewritten. I understand that uh, the graphics, for example, the ones that we're using don't look so good on mobile. We've tried it and um, we didn't, to, we didn't um, spend so much time looking into that. Uh, but I believe that maybe this uh, this package doesn't work on mobile, and maybe we would need to use another one. Um, the, the I think everything. News, the good news is that the integrations that you did with the APIs and the API that you create yourself, that are the bits that you say, oh, these are tough, the password reset, those things, from the process perspective, you can reuse it. That's the, that's the, good, the bright side of the backend, for example. True. That, that's awesome, guys. And I, I see your app uh, very commercially possible. I imagine influencers who are pro in cleaning, sharing the app. I imagine you guys with an Amazon store recommending products that will make the, the chores easier, cleaning products, everything. Please call me when you become rich. Don't forget about us. Please see all the faces. You did great. All of you did great. Um, Victor, if you have any comments, because they are the last presenting, and then I will just um, farewell everybody. Yeah, I just want to, to make uh, a special mention to four people. They are two teachers and two teacher assistants, and actually five people, okay? Juan Camilo and Felipe uh, was a teacher and teacher assistant for, for one of the, these groups, and Matia Totsi also helped a lot in that uh, um, cohort. And for sure, I want to mention uh, Jausman, that was the teacher of another group, and Bruno, uh, that is the TA of that cohort. Thank you very much, guys, because on all these projects, your work are totally reflective. No? I mean, uh, the quality of your classes, the quality of your passion for, for, for coding, we can see in these projects and we can see in all these guys when they work uh, and create things. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are mute, uh, Anseli. Bring everyone to the screen so we can say goodbye together after this awesome event. And you are so 3000% right, Victor. The passion, the time, the, the train of thinking that they use for their project it's very evident and and it showed up and uh, let's remember that they had only four months to get to this point and from those four months four weeks were invested in learning how to find the solutions to present these projects nobody was designing for them nobody was doing the work for them it's all their work and it's amazing to know that at five gigs academy we are able to make this happen with the help of the teachers teachers assistants and because of you, Victor, as a country manager, and because of awesome guests like Rolando Angelini, who shares the, the point of view of how they can thrive in the tech um, industry. Thank you all for your final presentations at Forgis Academy. We are proud and excited every time a cohort graduates and, a start, and, and it's the start of a new journey um, for all our students. Always remember the fact that developers are always in demand worldwide. As Rolando said, this is a profession that will allow you to work from anywhere in the world. Please prepare your LinkedIn profiles for success, putting all the information that recruiters need to know about you in order to get hired as soon as you uh, get your portfolio together. Um, remember that we have Geekforce at For Geeks Academy, which is lifetime job search support that you will have access to in order to get prepared for interviews and land your first job in tech. Um, we are also proud of being able to change your lives and be part of the digital transformation at businesses and responsible of preparing developers to be career ready and, and work ready in just four months. Thank you everyone for connecting. Until the next time. <laughs>